What up, this is July from Kickback Couture. Today I'm going to share with you five tips on using the new drum sequencer. So, the first thing I'm going to go over, number one, is going to be the patterns. I get a lot of questions I've been getting are about how do I, how why are these lit up? How did you do that? I don't understand. So, what I did was um, using pattern lanes pretty much. So, if I was to start with a Kong or even a red drum that did not have a player on it from scratch, it would look like this. And from there, there's nothing lit up. So what you want to do is either right click, edit automation, and this will open up the pattern select lane for you. And uh, from there, you grab your pen tool and you draw in one, or you know that was four, obviously. So um. You could draw in whatever order you want to draw them in, two, three, four, and you just change it with the drop down arrow. Or you could go up to the top and change it that way. Um, that's how you do that. Um, so if that was your question, now you know. I'm going to delete this track and show you a second way to do it. What you want to do, although that was a lot faster, is right click, create track for drum sequencer. You're gonna see that there is no way for you to draw anything. You can't click on it. So you're just gonna come up to this window looking icon, which is create pattern lane. And there you go, same thing. So uh, yeah, the quickest way to do that is to just right click on the numbers and create or edit the automation. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is um, controlling pitch with this. So obviously, um, if you have a drum loaded, you can control the pitch here if you're using a Kong. And if you're using a red drum, you can also control the pitch of your drum here, of course. Um, if that's not good enough for you and you want to know if it's a B, a D sharp, or an F sharp, or a C, whatever the case may be, then you'll want to load your drums into NNXTs and do it from there. Um, completely up to you. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention about the the pitch stuff is that obviously you cannot control the pitch in this sequencer. They did not make that an option. Everything over here is where that particular drum sound is located on your MIDI controller. So C1 will be where the kick is. C sharp will be where the snare is. The second snare will be on D1, and obviously you're not going to have these names in your player. It's going to be blank. Just double click it to name it. Um, if you want to do some type of pitch stuff, uh, which is what I usually do, you want to use it in an XT that way. When you play your drums, you can play any pitch you want to. So outside of what you programmed here, all you gotta do is select the device, hit record, and lay down the pitch controlled pattern that you want to. You can also just draw on a note lane where your devices are. Um, if you do not have this set up, which you might not, I'll get into it in a second. Um, the third tip I want to give you is how to do repeats. So I've been getting a lot of people ask me, Yo July, how did you do that? Like it's not working when I click on it. Well, first of all, it's not working because you can't click on it just like that. You have to click and drag up. Drag down. Drag up. It's not really straightforward. There's definitely a learning curve. But um, yes, you have to click and drag up in order for it to work. With velocity, you can drag up, you know, and with the repeats, you can't drag um, left to just do one, but if you want the same setting, if you drag to the right, it'll copy. As long as you do it in a straight line. If you go down, it'll like go up, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, keep that in mind. So, yes, um, other than that, 
the next thing I will talk about is probability. So you cannot drag up to work the probability. You have to drag down to work the probability. Why? I have no idea, but that's how it works. So that's the probability thing. And as far as my template, it is available on my site. If you want to know how I set up my drums, I'm going to go over it in a second. If you have no interest in cabling such as this, then I suggest you just go grab it. Um, it's really cheap. And um, if you've been to my store before, um, go check it out again. There's some really good sales going on right now. And I think you would you'd be happy about that. So stop okay so the next thing I want to talk about is um, how I set it up so let me just cool so obviously um, if you flip over to the back you have these drum gate out options I decided not to use those because I wanted to set it up to where I could use NNXTs, and it just did not allow it. There was nothing I could do about it. So what I did was I connected it to a column. So if I were to build this from scratch, what I would do is... Take me over here. I would create a Kong, add a player, the drum sequencer player, and now this lights up when this is being played. So obviously you see mine and I have NNXTs and you're like, how'd you do that? So once again, if you have no interest in cables, just grab it from my site. Um, fairly straightforward depending on your knowledge of reason just gonna right click and combine the Kong and um, what I do is move the player on top of the Kong so I can see it and I can collapse this eventually because I don't use it um, what I do is create an NNXT And I duplicate it eight times because there are, you know, eight different note lanes or pattern lanes in the drum sequencer. And from there, I'm just going to delete everything else really quick. And this one from there you can name everything accordingly I'm not gonna mess with the names for the sake of time but uh, you're gonna just flip over the rack and here where this gate is you're gonna route your gate got right, right ah. where this gate is in the NNXT you're going to route it to the gate out of the first drum and so on with the second drum so on with the third drum. Whoa. So on with the fourth drum. And you can make it look pretty when you're ready. Um, therefore, when I load a drum here, and these drums are from the Spider Demon drum kit. Now when I trigger here, it's going to play the NNXT. Now that sounds nothing like the drum that I just played because I have to turn up the release. So that is how I have my drums set up essentially. I'm not loading my drums into the Kong so that I can set my root notes from pitch detection. If I decide to use percussion or something like that, I want to be able to know the key my sample is in and I want to be able to go outside of the Kong and play it on my MIDI keyboard. and automate the pitch of whatever my drum may be. So that is how my 
template is set up. Um, so those are the five tips I have for using the drum sequencer. Um, definitely check out the shuffle as I talked about in my other video. Um, you can't click on it. Uh, you have to drag up. Um, as far as the reset, you can't click on it. You have to drag up. Um, it's kind of a learning curve. Preset, any drop down arrows, you can click on them. Um, so mess with those. Slide, drag to the left, drag to the right. You can drag up and down. It's easier that way. Um, these, drag to the, the left or the right. You can't. Um, it's harder when you just click. You gotta double click if you want to get it back over there. Um, that's all I have for you today. So if you like this video, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and most definitely let me know what you would like to see next. It's all culture. Kick back and cook up.